Good evening. This is News Now on TV360. I am Thelma Okoro. Dozens of people have been killed after two bombs exploded Friday morning at the Eid prayer ground in Damaturu, the capital of Yobi State in northeast Nigeria. The blast occurred just when Muslims were gathering for the congregational prayer to mark the Eid al-Fitri, the end of the holy month of Ramadan. A statement by the acting director, Army Public Relations, Colonel Sami Usman, said two female suicide bombers, an elderly woman and a 10-year-old girl detonated the explosive devices at screening areas mounted by security officials. There are conflicting figures on the true number of people that died in today's blast. The Nigerian military put the death toll at 50, while the police say just 15 people died in the tragedy. Troops and security agencies responded immediately to the incident, bringing the situation under control. No group has claimed responsibility for the latest attacks, but all fingers point to deadly Islamic sect Boko Haram. The sect has carried out similar attacks in that region. Still on today's blast, Yobe State Governor Ibrahim Gaidam and the Chief of Army Staff Major General Turku Yusuf Burutai have sympathized with the victims and the people of the state over the tragic incident that led to the death of dozens. They urged residents in the state to stay calm and be security conscious at all times. The Chief of Army Staff was in Yobe State to observe the Muslim Eid al Fitri celebration, which held today. The death toll from Thursday's bomb explosion at the Gombe Central Market in the northeast region of Nigeria has risen to 50. Authorities say the casualty figure is high because the number was filled with shoppers preparing for the Eid al Fitri celebration. Boko Haram terrorists previously carried out suicide and bomb attacks on bus stations and markets in Gombe and other northeastern cities. The recent attacks carried out by the sect have led to the killing of more than 700 people in less than four weeks. This has also led to intense pressure on the military for a more effective approach to the war on terror as Niger President Muhammad Buhari has made cracking down on Boko Haram his number one priority. A coalition group known as CSO, which is Integrity Forum, has condemned the call of the United Nations on the Nigerian government to grant a compassionate abortion to the women and girls impregnated by Boko Haram terrorists during their time in captivity. Angela Oda, who is the executive director for Center for Gender Education, in a press conference in Abuja, questioned the decision stating that the UN as a global body is supposed to uphold human rights, equity and justice. Like all, all other Nigerians, uh, the Civil Society Integrity Forum was shocked uh, that the United Nations, which is supposed to be a champion of human rights, uh, which promotes the un universal basic rights of every uh, human being, is now at the forefront of um, promoting that uh, innocent and defenseless babies in the safe havens of their mother's wombs should be terminated compassionately. And we think that is, uh, what's the compassion about killing a child, a human being made in the image and likeness of God who has done no wrong. Their only wrong, if that is a wrong, is that they they were conceived in very, you know, violent and tragic circumstances. That is not in their making. The giver of life, the creator of the universe, decided that in these horrific circumstances, he should bring forth a life. We think that it is inhuman for any human being made, created and made in the image and likeness of God to be calling for the killing of innocent and defenseless children. Besides Science, the uh, uh, evidence that has uh, been brought forth through uh, research is done in the last 20 years has shown that life begins at conception. It has also shown that um, abortion kills an innocent child and it also hurts women. It hurts women psychologically, it hurts them physically. Women are traumatized. The trauma of, of, of abortion is even more uh, uh, th than the process. The process seems easy. It's just a 10-minute procedure, but it has devastating short-term and long-term consequences. 
from uh, psychological consequences to physical consequences and also exposes them to a high risk of cancer. For every abortion, a woman's chances of getting a form of cancer increases by 44%, and that is in the media. So why would United Nations be uh, calling for, 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 for Nigeria to grant compassionate abortion uh, to, to these unfortunate girls? As far as I'm concerned, the United Nations, Planned Parenthood, and all these abortion, international abortion providers are not interested in these girls. They are not interested in the girls. For them, this is a window of opportunity to bring in the legalization of abortion into Nigeria and Nigeria should not accept it because that would be introducing a culture of death into our society. We should not make the mistake that countries like the United States of America made in 1973. America has successfully killed over 55 million of its innocent and defenseless babies and still America claims it's the champion of human rights in the world. Isn't that ironic? So Nigeria cannot go down that drain. Nigeria President Muhammadu Buhar has called for understanding and patience from Nigerians, saying his slow pace so far should not be mistaken for lack of vision to reposition Nigeria. The president made this known in his Idel Future message to Nigerians. Buhari stated that he is aware of the high expectations from residents of the country and he remains committed to giving the required leadership towards undoing the wrongs of the past and ensuring Nigeria thrives. Meanwhile, earlier today, Nigeria's Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, along with some senior government officials, paid a visit to President Buhari at the State House to celebrate the Idel Future Ceremony with him. Uh, Mr. President, uh, that uh, during the course of the campaigns, one of the things that you so frequently said was that this country would be a country where all faiths, all faiths will live together happily, will live together well, and that there will be no discrimination of any kind. And I think, Mr. President, sir, that um, you have clearly established that. And this ceremony is great evidence of that fact, that this country is a multi-faith country, there are people of every faith, even those who say they don't believe in God. Yet they are Nigerians and they deserve to be treated as such. I want to thank you, Mr. President, for living up to your promise. Uh, and I know that every Nigerian, and all, even those who were saying that would not be the case, now know that that is the case. I want to say to all of our Muslim brethren, Baka de Sala, the... The, the almighty God who uh, loves every one of us so dearly wants us to live together in peace and wants us to live together in prosperity. The business of government, as Mr. President has said so often, is the protection of lives and property and to give everybody a good opportunity to live, uh, to live in the way that they wish and to worship God in the way that they wish. I want to say that our country is a great country, is a country that has such incredible potential, and all that we are required to do is contribute our own bit to it, to just make our own contribution to it. It's a country where if we live, if we do, if we, if we live honestly and we, we choose to be forthright, in no time at all we will see a great change. And I believe... I believe that every one of us, Muslims, Christians, and all men of different faiths, this opportunity that we have is one that we must seize with both hands. The opportunity of a government that is determined to do the right things, to do it carefully, to do it steadily, and to ensure that our country really changes for good. I thank you most sincerely for fulfilling the traditional uh, greetings for whoever occupies uh, this place. I, I thank you very much for your loyalty to the country and to our institution and to the system. Um, today, during and immediately after the prayers, uh, I think the young men, the youth, almost overwhelmed the security 
and I have to hold it tight to my gown to get to my car. I was advised to enter from the ADC's uh, seat and I refused. I went across, tried to raise my hand to the wild youth who wanted uh, to see me. Uh, in an occasion like this, it will show that um, uh, after what happened to late President Reagan, it's only God Almighty that protects leaders. Because in a mob like this, anybody with a sharp knife can get access and do a lot of damage. <laughs> so all the policemen that were deployed as soldiers since 6 in the morning, before I come out, two hours later in the rains, you know, cannot protect you. Only God protects. I hope God will continue to protect us. I think um, the Vice President have said it all, and I thank him very much. But I regret that I will not share my gift with anybody. <laughs> so, FCT, you have got a problem. You have to have a search for the Vice President. So please convey my thanks and happy Sunday to all your families and relatives back at home. And I congratulate you for the privilege you have that is only you that are in FCT that uh, have the privilege to come and meet me and shake hands with me and take picture with me. Other Nigerians are envious of you if you don't know it. <laughs> I, I thank you very much. <laughs> Operatives of the Department of State Services have invaded the private residence of former National Secretary Advisor Sambo Dasuki in Nigeria's capital city of Abuja. The standoff, which began on Thursday, continued into the second day on Friday. Reports say the operation is connected with a secret probe into the alleged misuse of funds totaling billions of naira assigned for the fight against Boko Haram. The DSS operative reportedly stormed the residence of the former security advisor in a bid to arrest him, but were however resisted. Authorities are yet to officially comment on the invasion as details remain unclear. Dasuki, who was appointed by former President Goodluck Jonathan in 2012, was sacked by President Muhammad Buhari a few days ago. He was replaced by Major General Babagana Mongunu, who is retired as the country's national security advisor by the president. A group known as the Greenwood Dialogue Foundation has urged Nigeria's president to include youths in governance. Speaking at a press briefing in Abuja, Marlene Onyocha, who is the director an administration of the non-governmental organization said the role of the youth in nation building cannot be overlooked. The legislative arms of government is presently constituted, as presently constituted, should hit the ground running in driving the change Nigerians actually deserve and voted for rather than allow itself to be distracted by primordial sentiments and external interferences. We also call on the judicial arm of government to rise up to their responsibilities and offer Nigerians this much needed succor through prompt, prompt dispensation and justice and equity. The call for quick reforms in our criminal justice system as an invaluable tool for tracking corruption cannot be overemphasized. Furthermore, the political class must ensure stability in the polity by advocating patriotism and national integration. Global facts have repeatedly shown that young people constitute 60% or even more of population in Nigeria, the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Sadly, the critical mass of young people, these people, have continuously been grossly denied relevance and active participation in governance. This ugly trend needs to be nipped in by the bulk beyond relatives of job creation and youth empowerment, but also through immediate inclusion of young people in key positions, ministerial appointments, directors of key agencies, and departments of governance.
It is our firm belief that youth element, element in Nation building will greatly improve national cohesion as well as promote peace and security across the nation. We call on all citizens of Nigeria to rise up and actively become the integral force required for the growth and development of our beloved nation. We must all embrace and drive positive change in our fatherland. All over the world, great nations are built by the collective efforts of all citizens who stand resolute and united against all odds. We should no longer allow ourselves to be divided across religious, ethnic or political variances. Rather, we also stay united and formally against deceptive, divisive elements. Abdullahi Muhammadu has been appointed as the new Commandant General of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps. A statement released on Friday by Femi Adeshino, the President's spokesman, said President Buhari approved the appointment. The new NSCDC boss was an Assistant Commandant General of the NSCDC before his appointment. He succeeds Ade Abolurui, who retired from service. Muhammadu, an indigene of Niger State, holds a BSc in Sociology from the University of Sokoto and a Master's in Law Enforcement and Criminal Justice from the Amadou Bello University in Zaria. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll look at more news stories. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, would you, come, would you want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down, explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. Welcome back to Business Stories Now. Brent crude oil steadied on Friday in low trading volumes after sharp losses earlier in the week on expectations of increased exports from Iran, adding to an already heavy supply glut. Brent crude was up $0.09 cents at $57.01 a barrel. Oil prices have fallen steadily over the last two months as both crude benchmarks are down more than 15% from June peaks. Analysts say the organization of the petroleum exporting countries is producing about 2.5 million barrels per day, which is more crude than needed at the moment. To international stories now, health authorities in Liberia are tracking a herbalist who escaped quarantine and fled the hospital where he was being monitored for the deadly Ebola virus. The herbalist treated the 70-year-old boy who sparked Liberia's third wave of Ebola infections. Officials say he may have fled to Nimba County in the north of the country near Guinea. He was one of the 120 people placed under quarantine for coming into contact with the deceased. Paul Kanyu, a spokesman for the Nimba local government, said the county was not taking Ebola's recurrence lightly because of the country. The county suffered severely during the first outbreak of the virus. The World Health Organization (WHO) declared Liberia Ebola-free on May 9th, but reported a new case nearly two months later. Four Marines were killed on Thursday by a gunman who opened fire at two military offices in Chattanooga in Tennessee, USA, before being fatally shot in an attack officials called a brazen brutal act of domestic terrorism. The FBI named the suspect as Muhammad Yusuf Abdulaziz, who is 24 years old, but U.S. federal investigators say he had no known links to international terrorism. Three people were also seriously injured in the attack. U.S. President Barack Obama said the attacks were heartbreaking. Local prosecutors are investigating the attacks as domestic terrorism. However, the FBI say, say Abdulaziz's motives remain unclear. To sports now, World Cup governing body FIFA is set to I beg your pardon, World Cup governing body FIFA is set to change the bidding rules for nations who want to host the World Cup by banning the countries from investing in 
overseas football development projects. This comes as a result of the bidding crisis which followed the chaotic draw race for the 2018 and 2022 tournaments awarded to Russia and Qatar respectively. England and Australia were among the 2018 World Cup bidders criticized for pouring money into football programs in Caribbean and elsewhere in a bid to sway votes in their favor. FIFA also says no bidding nation would be allowed to spend money on the overseas football development project, both prior to and after voting. The bidding process for the 2026 World Cup was suspended due to FIFA's current crisis over bribery allegations. Still on FIFA, the president of the body, Seb Blatter, will attend the 2018 FIFA World Cup preliminary draw in Russia. This is according to the sports minister of that country. Vitaly Mutko, while speaking in an interview with Russian newspaper Sports Express, confirmed that Blatter would be attending the draw and will also meet Russian president Vladimir Putin. Blatter, who is 79 year old, has come under scrutiny for corruption scandals rocking the football governing body following the awarding of the 2018 and 2022 World Cups to Russia and Qatar, respectively. Earlier this month, he opted against traveling for the FIFA Women World Cup in Canada due to fears he may be arrested by U.S. prosecutors. We've come to the end of news now. We thank you very much for joining us. I am Thelma Okoro.